And here we are. This is 21 days of countdown. Countdown in 21 days to the 12th United States Spirit Symposium. Why is this such an important event? Why? Well, there are thousands of reasons. First, as Emmanuel says, there are, when there is a good idea, it doesn't come from us. It comes from God. All the good that there is in this universe comes from God. Nothing comes from us. So here we have it uh, for you, the 12th U.S. Spiritist Symposium. What is the symposium? It's the National Spiritist Event of the United States of America. Yes, and all in English. I, I think in 10 years or 20 years or 100 years, sometime in the future, when people rewind the tape and see that we're emphasizing it's in English, they're going to ask why she emphasizing the fact that it is in English. Well, because unfortunately, though we are in 2018, there are many meetings that are still not in English. And it's sad. It's sad because... The United States uh, is, the, the main language is English, though they never made it official. And we need it to be in, in English, not only because of the incarnates, but also because of the majority, the discarnates. The discarnates in this country certainly speak, majority of them speak English. That's no doubt about it. And according to the teachings of Spiritism and the main reference I'm going to give to you, is in the book Evolution into Worlds by Andrea Lewis, though it's not in, it's in English, but not published, but it's in Portuguese. You can verify. Card, uh, Andrea Lewis is asked this very question about whether or not discarnate spirits understand any and all and every language. They don't, unless they are evolved. So the spirits who need the most, they don't understand another language, but their language. So we need to speak it in English if we want to help them out. Just to have a feeling, listen to any spiritual program in any other language, especially a language you don't understand, and then you know what we're talking about. Maybe beautiful, but if I don't understand, as Paul of Tarsus says, if it's not intelligible, it's to no use. So it's beyond vibrations. Spiritism hasn't come to give us vibrations. It came to change our consciences the consciousness and it's about freeing ourselves from our ignorance and we cannot do it by you know it doesn't it doesn't happen through osmosis it has to happen through our own will stepping forward so this 12th u.s spiritist symposium is different why because it's the first one that happens in the capital of the united states of america it has been 12 years it started in baltimore and he traveled to different states, different cities, from East Coast to the West Coast, North and East of the country. And now finally completing a cycle of 12 events, 12 years in the capital of the United States of America. Funny enough, this is the first national spiritist event with uh, united forces by several spiritist centers in the United States to happen in the capital of the United States of America, Washington, D.C. And why? Because uh, the higher spirits want it to be that way. And we just know it's perfect time. Perfect timing because more than ever, we need to gather together and pray and help change the consciousness in the very city. So what happens on the behind the scenes of an event like this? Many people think it's only about what we're seeing the incarnate level. And if you are spiritist and you have been studying, you know it's beyond it. So tonight we have two friends here with us. Leo Vieira, who is going to be, he's from the spirit side of Baltimore. He has participated since day one in Baltimore in 2007. And he's going to be one of the masters of ceremony, the MCs, together with Leticia Klausner. They, he's going to be facilitating the sessions and the dynamics of this event. 
Um, and then also Carol Correa Smith, who is from the Spirit Side of Virginia. She's going to be participating in a workshop on uh, Spiritist Education for Children and Youth together with Alba Morales, Ligia Carvalho, and Bernadette Leal, sorry, Bernadette Leal from California. The United States Spiritist Federation has been coordinating the efforts together with a committee, a local committee of Virginia and Maryland and DC, as well as several Spiritist Centers sponsoring this event to make it happen. So here we have our dear friend, <clears throat> Leo Vieira. Hi, Leo. How are you? Hello and good evening. Good day for everyone. Whoever is uh, touching bases with us right now. Yay. It's good to be here um, talking about this beautiful event that is ahead of us and really um, hopefully set the ground up for us to meet again on this 12th um, beautiful event, which is the symposium, the yearly event that we have. So yes. welcome everyone and um, glad to be here with everyone. So Leo, do you remember the first one? The first one. <laughs> Many questions, right? As mm -hmm. we still have today, and I think this is actually uh, the theme for this event too, uh, there was there were too many questions, several questions back then. We didn't have as many books in English back then. We did not have many uh, friends of the English speaking uh, side of the world along with us. And I think is more than ever we need to be together in this event in the in our nation uh, nation's capital um, to share this uh, beautiful science. These you know our um, let's say, uh, the, the good things that we have done thus far with Spiritism um, and the books, right, and celebrate uh, one another. Exactly. And Leo, how much progress, huh? How much progress since uh, the first one, as you said, uh, the progress as a, a nation in Spiritism. We can tell after 12 years that this English-speaking movement in spiritism in the United States has grown so much, so many speakers, so many people who have been um, sharing this teaching, so many books and, and more centers in the English speaking language. So, and more people really coming along and partaking on this, not only um, one nationality, but several nationalities, right? That is correct. It, just to think, Vanessa, that in 12 years, we can easily tune in and, and, and just log in anywhere. Um, and we have millions of uh, thousands and thousands of programs, you know, Kardec Radio. Uh, we have YouTube channels that, that we have several works, um, books online and many things, many works, workshops, you name it. Um, so I think it's, it's time to be in Washington and truly share this work with one another. I think that will be a, um, uh, the, a, a truly, a, a way for us to truly um, exemplify and put this forth with everyone. Exactly, Leo. So, you know, we also have here with us Carol Correa, and I want her to share a few thoughts. Right, Carol, you have been um, at the symposium for a few yes, twice, twice, right? twice before this year, yes, and it's really transformative to see so many voices and presences coming together as if we were one family speaking one language for one sole purpose, which is to share the beautiful message of the Christ with everyone around us. And it's beautiful to see the English-speaking audience uh, taking advantage of, of the love of the Christ in their language. It's beautiful to see their souls being nurtured as wow. well. And it's beautiful to see, for example, efforts like Kardec Radio 
which is on air 24 hours, seven days a week, also in English, the Spiritist magazine. So we see many seeds that the Christ has planted in these beautiful lands sprouting and they're growing and bearing fruits. And it's a beautiful fruit that we have to enjoy having a symposium right here on our capital. And, uh, you know, friends, we want to, oops, okay, one second. <laughs> we want to uh, share with you that if some people ask us, why is this a big deal? Now I'm going to return the question. Why is this not a big deal? Why? Why not? Why not making it a big deal? If... It's the work of the good. It's funny because I was telling Karen Mark today, if I make a silly video, you know, imagine yourself just saying silly things. It's going to go viral. Millions of people. But if you talk about good things, people are like, oh, but you know, the work of the good shall be valued. I know we're not there yet. Right, Carol? Right. So it's for us, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because we're talking about the good conquering grounds. And we're talking about the capital of the world. Whether we like it or not, uh, the United States of America is a big part of the brain of the world. And today we celebrate also two things, right, Karen and Mark? We, we, we celebrate this um the discarnation of ellen kardec which happened on march 31st 1869 21 years after the first coordinated orchestrated spirit phenomena that happened in hydesville upstate new york through the fox sisters which happened on march 31st 1848. If you think it's a coincidence, there's no coincidence in this world. And we want to share with you that there is no coincidence also that in 45 minutes, we're going to celebrate. And I'm going to show this to you. I have to. Okay. I have to show something with you magazine, which has everything to do with all that we're talking about. And as you're seeing this, this is the 10th, 10th year in a row that we are publishing the Spiritist magazine in English. On April 1st, 2018, tomorrow, in 45 minutes, we're going to celebrate the fact that we have here with us the Spiritist magazine. Yes, and we share this with you because no matter, no matter if people oh, say, oh, but it's, I cannot, buy, you can buy it. Just go to spiritismagazine.org and you can buy the magazine and send them, them to your house. We no longer have subscriptions. Well, but the magazine exists. It exists, has always existed. There is an app. You can and should buy the app. Not buy. You should just download the app. Just go to the website, spiritismagazine.org. This is the latest issue where we're also celebrating 150 years of the book Genesis. And we're also celebrating the fact that there are new discoveries happening for us. Now, talking back about the symposium here, okay? The symposium is going to happen as a way for us to go back to this new understanding, okay? New understanding about life. As Leo said, back in 2007, when the first symposium, many people had many questions. And today, 12 years later, we have answers. Answers to these many questions. So there will be speakers from throughout the United States that will come from 9 a.m. to 6.15 p.m. to share with you in a beautiful location. We found a beautiful location 
for you, very modern, very near the convention center, comfortable in the beautiful city of Washington, D.C., in this beautiful April. We were just there today in Washington, D.C., and the weather is beautiful, and the flowers are blooming in the trees, and I tell you, the city is gorgeous, and it's very invitational, but you know, we need you there. We need you there because more than just coming for yourself, we're going to ask you a big, big, big favor. Join us. Not for us. Not because we need crowds. But we need the togetherness to pray. You know? Think about. Now we want to call Leo and and also our dear Carol here with us to um, brainstorm. We always talking about the behind the scenes of a spiritist center. But what happens in a spiritist event of this magnitude when several, there is nothing equal in the spiritist movement around the world, not even in Brazil. You can investigate and if you find it, you tell me. But there is nothing. In this country, the United States of America, our spiritist centers and federations gather together. They sponsor financially and human resources wise. It's a beautiful equality movement. We come together and we join forces under the umbrella of the United States Spiritist Federation to pray together, to create visualizations of peace, to share beautiful studies, deep studies on the Spiritist teachings because this is a science. There is a beautiful exchange. This is in the material plane. We have activities for children and youth because many events in Brazil, for example, as a ref, they are beautiful, but they are only for adults. Some of them may do for children, but usually it's not the spiritist centers that gather together nationally to make up for this beautiful national event. In the United States, we have it. So it's very unique, very unique. So what happens potentially, let's brainstorm, Leo and Carol, what happens on the behind the scenes of this um, um, of this event? What may happen? Leo, you want to start it? Well, Vanessa, it depends. <laughs> it's on the both sides of life. <laughs> Let's just take mm -hmm. one at a time. I think in the, uh, well, for, for sure, as you already mentioned, in the physical plane, uh, we have this commotion, this, this, gre this good connection of people, not in, in one spirit center, but many spirit centers, um, separating tasks, uh, delegating things to be done, uh, the, the worries about certain types of work. Uh, one of the things that I would like to add in this aspect of work as well is that in the past, we did not have uh, the, the, the work that we're having right now is the, the, perhaps to talk to people who are in need as well. Uh, to offer ourselves to talk to people, to see if they if they have any issue, uh, to come and talk to us, and and perhaps directing them to a location where they can go to if they're coming from another state or not, uh, to give them references, you know, to uh, the go-to keys in order for them to help themselves in finding um, uh, not a cure but some kind of um, of help with the spirit of science. And obviously, if this happens in the physical realm, for sure, the higher minds, the higher spirits who are guiding us, they were doing the same, uh, much more than we think, much more than we are, um, based on their um, understanding of life. So I think there is a huge um, uh, disposition of, of effort, work, and love that is being um, shared now uh, that before, obviously, doing the event, and I'm quite sure that this will continue as well uh, for the next event, right, after we go through it, um, to put forth more work. And I think the last thing that I would like to share as we're talking about this is that it's one more emphasis to really um, um, 
understand and make sure that we have in our hearts the understanding that we have the 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 work uh, the literature that we need right now to understand the science and really practice and really share with others our family members perhaps who never came in contact with a friend um, you said come and i was thinking as well come and bring a friend <laughs> right bring someone who you love to perhaps, you know, look, listen to this. It may not be everything that you want to hear right now, but it may be something enlightening. It may be one of the answers for your questions that you have, one of the talks, one of the, the uh, services that we will have. So there's many things that we can share, and there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of service um, to give and to receive as well. Exactly. And now we have our Carol. You want to share, Carol? Sure. Uh, in the opening of the book, Paul and Stephen, Emmanuel says to us that Jesus personally calls each and every one of us to his harvest. So I am certain that much before we started our work on, this, on the material realm, our loving mentors have been calling on us to partake on this journey and the fact that we are sharing what we know and willing to learn more in the English language allows us to multiply the resources that the Christ himself is entrusting to us. Like in the parable of the talents, if we have one little talent, it is our responsibility to multiply it. So the question that I leave for myself and for everyone out there is, do we realize that the Christ himself is counting on us to multiply the wisdom and the joys of his love? And that spiritism as a science, as a philosophy, and as a moral and ethical code equips us to do that. So we are partaking on our responsibility before the master. He is the one saying, come and join me. So when, if we say yes, we are saying yes to him because the invitation doesn't come from Carol or from Leo or from Vanessa Anceloni. The invitation comes from the master. And it is not by chance that we are placed in the United States of America. The United States of America is the brain of the world. And it is the responsibility of the brain to nourish the rest of the body. So are we doing our part? And the symposium is an opportunity for us to faithfully and lovingly fulfill the task of passing Jesus' message forward. So he himself is counting on us. And the invitation is most definitely coming from him. As Emmanuel has said, Christ personally and kindly invites each and every one of us. So I visualize the Christ himself with open arms, with his beautiful, loving smile, saying kindly to each and every one of us, I love you. You are a worker in my harvest. Come join me. I'm counting on you. Thank you, Carol. So here we have it, my friends. It's not by chance that we're kickstarting this on March 31st, the day we are celebrating the glorious you know, uh, discarnation of uh, Alan Kardec, the 170 years of the beginning of these orchestrated events in the world through the Fork Sisters. And it's, we are right around the corner of Easter. And it's the day we reflect on the, the Christ within ourselves. Do you think Alan Kardec would come to the symposium if he were incarnated? I don't think he would miss it. Do you think, do you think Chico Xavier would come? Do you think if Divaldo Franco were living in the United States of America, would he come? I have no doubt. So why don't you come? Why? Why do you think? What kinds of spirits do you think? And I'll share with you without shame. 
Why? Because Kardec shared this. And think about it, you don't have to believe. I remember before the first symposium, when we received the message from the higher spirits coordinating the efforts of the SSB, connected to the mentor, Ben Franklin, and saying we need to do it. A meeting solely in English for this country. We needed to have cultural identification. And I remember every time I've been at a symposium, irrespective of the city, irrespective of anything, always, always, without failing, and I have other mediums who have said they've seen similar things, spirits of the highest order connected to this nation, from Abraham Lincoln, and you can see one of the covers of the Spiritist Magazine, if you go to spiritismagazine.org, where there are women. It's a drawing, beautiful drawing by Marcus Falcom in Florida, because it was a vision of all these women in America, Clara Barton, uh, um, many others. They, their names just escaped my mind right now. Eleanor Frank, uh, Roosevelt, and um, many others, just keep my mind. But coordinating these beautiful efforts, not only in the Spiritist Movement, but also in the Spiritist Movement, to boost the family values, to boost the Spiritist Movement, to reach out to people. Why would they come to this meeting? And the question is, why not? If you think high spirits would only come, I've never read in any of the books that the good spirits only show up when there are specific mediums or specific people. That's not what they say. If you read in the mediums book, question and answer, 341, it's not a question, it's actually a statement. Kardec says, mediums book, item 341, conditions to attract good spirits and they say be on the same page perfect commonality of feelings and sentiments if you think one medium defines it all i don't think so one speaker i don't think so and in this one no matter if we have differences it's about a unity everybody who is there they don't have their tickets paid to be a speaker to be a volunteer. Each and every volunteer not only has to do the work, but they pay their entrance, which is only $30. And yet, they need to partake because that's the way they are also contributing to the making off of the event. There is a beautiful orchestrated mu movement on the behind the scenes that is facilitated by the United States Spiritist Federation. And, and the sponsors are several Spiritist Centers. So, I don't have a doubt that these high order spirits care for these moments. And I agree with Leo. If we, if we do even better, oh man, miracles can happen. Right, Leo? That is correct. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> but Vanessa, just a quick, um, quick thing that I would like to say as well, which I, I like to discuss with people that you know, some people, they come to me and they say, uh, this is just an objection that I hear every now and then. Um, and I think it's nice to clear some objections as far as, you know, uh, an event like this. You know, much work has been placed and there will still be much work to be done until the day and on the day. But some people say, oh, it's a full day. You know, it's a lot of hours, this and this and that. Well, here's the thing. Break down into sections, okay? It, go to the invitation and you post it right there as you were speaking. Um, go through the talks, go through the round tables, pick a topic that you want to hear that you in, that interests you the most um, and, and kind of go through. And perhaps as you go through it, you think that, oh, this may not service, you know, do any service to me. But the, all the talks, all the speakers, you know, the round table, the, the work with the children, everything is such an amazing work that it really begs us to really participate and be there. You know, it, it, you, Heather, for example, talking about, uh, Heather from SICKUP, uh, talking about promoting human equality. Who doesn't need that today, right? 
uh, talking about the, one of the roundtables, accepting life unconditionally. It's it just amazing things, amazing topics like this. It really, really, really uh, puts us in a position to participate and be there, bring our family members, bring our friends. And, and again, it's just, uh, I can't, I have no words to describe the excitement, the joy um, of this celebration, a celebration with work and with um, the, the courage to put forth uh, this, this science as, as Carol reminded us um, uh, earlier today. Exactly. And, you know, I have here with me the book uh, Living Spring. And there is a chapter titled 121. We also want to use this 21 days of countdown and wrap up because I know it's late, it's 1130 now in the East Coast. But we want to wrap up by sending prayers and vibrations so we can operate well during that day. I will never forget the work of the spirits that happen on the behind the scenes. I remember the first one in Baltimore, but not only, everyone. The spirits, they post flyers in the streets of the city where it's the symposium is going to happen. They call for spirit doctors, nurses, and therapists. They create um, spiritual scenarios in which they are going to work like a hospital setting, a fraternal counseling setting to help the spirits who are wandering, don't know what's happening in their lives, who feel they are wounded, they are still suffering. And it's beautiful. It counts on our vibrations. So it's not only about us, the incarnates. It's also about this rescue work in the spiritual realm. And it really works. So here this message, I'm just going to get three parts of this message. Let us seek the light. It's a quote, it begin, Emmanuel begins by quoting Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture inspired by God is useful for instruction in righteousness. Emmanuel then says, Seek an idea according to its value. Renewing and ident edifying ideas arise in the same way. Okay. Why should we expect them to be approved by our family members or personal friends in order for them to produce a wholesome effect within us and around Every consoling and instructive page is a gift from heaven. Let us then seek the light, wherever it may be, and the darkness will never reach us. So if you want to seek the light on April 21st, I vouch for this. If you come to the symposium, there won't be darkness. Not for you at that time. I assure you that because if you, that's what I mean you saying. If you seek the light, there won't be darkness. And seek the light within. The enlightening, the enlightening answers to our questions will be given there. There's a lot of friendship, a lot of exchange. It's a national effort to bring light where there is not light yet. And you can join forces. If you want to work also with Kardec Radio, Kardec, Ra Kardec Radio is going to have a booth. And uh, we need your help, okay? There's a lot of work to be done and covered by Kardec Radio. Just write us a line at kardecradio.com. And for the second year in a row, we can have a teamwork effort there, really operating, not only to broadcast it live, but also do a lot of work on the behind the scenes. Leo, I would like to ask for your last remarks before we wrap up with a prayer. Sure. Uh, the the only thing I would like to say is that we have these um, days before the event, uh, 21 plus days there now in our hands, right here in our hands. Uh, <clears throat> and it's really remind ourselves of this opportunity that we have and remind others as well uh, what we 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 
we have here in front of us. Um, it's a great opportunity to get to know spiritism, to get to know other people um, who actually are uh, working hard with spiritism to help others, to enlighten themselves and others with service um, and much work. So this is what I would like to live with you and invite everyone to this beautiful event and be part of this as well as we are uh, praying, as we are preparing ourselves um, uh, before the event, because we also need the help. The workers need the help and we need the encouragement from everyone else. So I think this is the final moment for me. And um, obviously uh, many more days that we'll be participating and speaking here together uh, until the event. Thank you, Leo. We look forward to seeing you there. We look forward to, to being with you and other friends at that event. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Now I'd like to ask Carol to finalize it for us, Carol, with a prayer. A prayer we ask you, friends, to join forces with us. We are thanking very much our dear Dulce. Before we say the prayer, she's reminding us of a beautiful moment that happened in 2008. 2008, uh, this moment happened in which we got uh, Dr. Cesar Pérez de Carvalho speaking in English in the name of the International Spiritist Council. And we'll never forget the beautiful consideration by them. And we thank everyone who is here present and joining forces. Friends, if you haven't bought your ticket, do it. Our dear Sergio Santos from the Federation has just put a link right here in our Facebook. So you can click there. And, you know, it's so symbolic. And, you know, the good news is after the symposium, for 10 days in a row, our Spiritist Society of Virginia, which is right around the corner, is going to be open every day with sessions every day, right, Carol? Right. In consideration to the people who are attending. We have people coming from out of the country as well, and you're welcome to join us as well. So, Carol, we pass the word to you so you can lead us into a prayer for this moment. Let us now then join hearts with the efforts of all the spirit mentors who are already working day in and day out to help us materialize this national reunion of souls that are committed to the United States and to the world. Let us visualize a loving heart, the heart of the Christ himself, shining light onto the capital of the United States, renewing its vibrations, renewing its currents of love and fraternity, recalling the presence of the loving founding fathers and mothers, who have created this country in the name of the Christ for it to embody the ideals of freedom, equality, and fraternity. Let us visualize this loving heart uniting each and every one of us to the loving masters, to the founding fathers, to the loving mentors, forming one beautiful embrace of light. And let us visualize the location of the symposium being enveloped in this loving embrace. Let us visualize everyone who is being invited to partake in this banquet of love, life, light, and fraternity being embraced in this current of love. Let us visualize the discarnate spirits also being enveloped in this current. And let us visualize ourselves coming together, open to learning, loving, and serving 
renewing ourselves and finding answers to our daily questions by opening our hearts to the true teachings that can free us now and always from the chains of the past. Let us value this beautiful blessing and accept the invitation of the Master to work in his harvest in the beautiful United States of America. Let everyone who will come and join us feel this embrace of love and light. So be it. Thank you, Carol. Thank you also, Leo, for being with us. We look forward to giving you a hug in, in person, Leo, and friends, okay, friends? So join forces with us. We'll be here tomorrow, God willing, for more, a conversation, and also a prayer, friends. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Carol. Thank Kara. you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.